Optimizers, micro inverters, do you need them? Are they worth it? And when don't you need them? It's a confusing old subject. Well, in today's video, we're gonna be keeping it simple and jargon free so you understand when you do and when you don't. Let's go. So if you're watching this, you may well be in the quoting and comparison stage where somebody specified an optimizer or microinverter. The purpose of this video is not to try and sell you an optimizer or a microinverter. It's actually the complete and utter opposite because I see so many designs where somebody's put an AC panel, like a microinverter stuck onto the back of a normal solar panel or someone specifying optimizers where I'm thinking, you don't need that. And actually, if you check out of this video today because you think, actually don't need them, then I feel like my job will be done. But for those people that really wanna find out and get to grips with this in a really simple way, this video is gonna be for you. So it all starts with your string inverter. And in a second, I'm gonna bring in my own home to introduce an optimizer. So inverters basically need a minimum amount of voltage in order to be able to start firing up. So my inverter fires up at 150 volts. Now you might be gobbled to you. What that means is about five solar panels in a moderate level of sunshine is needed in order for that inverter to just engage in the first place. Something like a Powerwall 3, for example, can start at 60 volts. So you'd only need two panels in a moderate level of sunshine for that to start firing up and generating electricity, which is ultimately what we're here for and why we need it. Let's just delve into maximum power point trackers. Effectively, this is the number of strings of solar arrays that we can put in. There are limitations of how many solar panels we can wire into a power point tracker. So this can range from two, as I mentioned previously, and on an average inverter, this can go up to say 12 to 15 solar panels. So that's the maximum limitation. Now, if I've got an east and a west facing roof, I could effectively therefore have 12 panels on one side, 12 panels on another. So let's come on to my house. So in my scenario for the inverter that I wanted for my house at the time, which was kind of the latest gadget going, of course, I needed at least four panels per PowerPoint tracker. I had four south facing, four north facing. I also had space for two on my east facing orientation. If you've got two PowerPoint trackers, but more than two roofs that you're trying to fit solar panels to, and they face different orientations, like me, you may well have to introduce an optimizer. What these are essentially doing is helping your inverter to maximize the amount of generation that we're getting out of it. But if I've got east and west, then as my sun comes up in the morning, some of my panels are in the sun, some of them are in the shade, and they're on the same power point tracker. My bypass diodes can't trigger themselves to manage that partial shading optimization. The current, drops right down and the amount of generation I get out of my inverter rapidly decreases. So if I installed an optimizer, you can individually monitor each panel. This can help regulate that process. Effectively, if I've got less PowerPoint trackers than I do orientations, if I've got three aspects, east, west, south, but I've only got two PowerPoint trackers, then on balance of probabilities, you're going to need either a microinverter, which I'll come on to later on, or you're gonna need an optimizer. I think that's a very reasonable thing to state. Where I would also potentially introduce an optimizer is for safety. So if I've got a nursery, a primary school, I am a business, I would potentially fit these because you can also do rapid level shutdown. So in reception, I fit a big red button, I press the big red button and every single panel goes down to zero volts. But for the average household, that's just complete and utter overkill. You really, probably don't need these. It's only a very select number of installations that we would bother. So really, there's only a very limited number of scenarios where I would even want one of these. If you've not got shading on a roof and all the panels are facing the same direction on a PowerPoint tracker, I really struggle with the use case that you would ever need an optimizer or a microinverter. There's a lot of installers out there just blindly fitting these because they're going, you need to see what every panel is doing. Well, no, you don't. By fitting one of these, what we're doing is we're introducing an extra part that's not gonna add any generation to my system. In fact, it's probably gonna take a couple of percent away because ultimately these need power to be able to run them. Ultimately, why do we put a solar system together? Because we want to generate electricity, because we want grid independency, because we want financial return, because we want to do something good for the environment. 
We don't do it to put as many parts as we possibly can on a roof and create loads of extra complexity. Modern inverters now have more power point trackers that can start firing up at a lower voltage. So in my scenario, if I've only got two panels, there are inverters out there that can manage that job without needing one of these. The three products we predominantly install as installers are Powerwall 3, Sige Energy and Give Energy. Powerwall 3 has three maximum power point trackers. Each power point tracker can essentially start working with as little as two panels. So in my house scenario, I simply would never have needed optimizers. With the Sige Energy system, you can actually get up to four power point trackers in the bigger range. So I could pick four aspect ratios, I could have a partially shaded array, and just simply rely upon the hard work that the inverter's doing, again, instead of fitting any unnecessary parts. With the Give Energy low voltage range, I only have two power point trackers, which is where I found myself. And effectively I went, well, I've got to meet at least 120 volts. I've got three orientations, but I want panels on them all. At that point in time, I had to pivot to an optimizer. But with new inverters that are on the market, you probably don't need these anymore. A couple of bit of niche bits of tech compatibility. So Powerwall 3 does not work with optimizers. If you needed individual panel level control, you would have to go to a microinverter in those rare scenarios. Sige Energy, you can actively say, actually, I only need to optimize two panels. Don't think that you have to optimize them all. If you've got a couple that are just sat onto one side with the Sige Energy system, you can add them in via the Sige Energy app, optimize a couple of panels, and just control those two. Minimize the risk at all stages of the game. Now, I know that this is a complicated topic and I'm doing my utmost to try and keep it as simple as possible. There's a lots of things that I haven't included on purpose because I was really bothered about bamboozling everybody. If you have any specific comments, put them below. I'll do my best to personally respond to those. Obviously, I'm a busy guy, but I'll do my best to try and respond to those because I appreciate that no two roofs are the same, no two homes are the same, and no two scenarios are the same as well. So if I can do anything to help you guys, I'd really appreciate it. And in return, if you could like and subscribe to the channel, I'd greatly appreciate that too. So that's optimizers. And this is a microinverter. They do slightly different jobs. Let's do a deep dive. So this is a microinverter. It looks very similar and it also affixes to the back of a solar panel at roof level. So it's doing everything an optimizer can do, plus it's inverting. So what this is doing is taking the DC that's generated by the solar panel and converting into AC current that we use in our home. Think boiling a kettle. You can't boil it with DC. But this is doing it at panel level. Now, traditionally, these were pegged as being able to go at low light conditions. That's less of a thing now with lower voltages being available on inverters. So these are essentially a mini inverter, hence the name microinverter, without the ability of being able to install battery storage directly to them. So where are these ideal for? If I've got one straggly solar panel on one array, there isn't an inverter out there that can effectively generate for that. So if I have a load of random one panels or two panels on some of these arrays, and I've got multiple arrays and they're all kind of higgledy-piggledy, then I might want to pick microinverters for that because that would be a good use case for that. Where I would also potentially use these is for commercial installations. If I'm on a big flat roof of Tesco's, in the same way that I can do panel level shutdown with my optimizer, I can also then, in the same way with an optimizer, I can see what each panel is doing. However, if I have a failure, it's on an individual panel at panel level. So when I'm on mass scale, for accessible solar panels, effectively, I only get one panel that gets pulled out of that generation set. However, for a domestic customer that needs to access these for maintenance, that probably isn't gonna be as easy. And these are also sold, by the way, in what's known as an AC panel, which is essentially the panel behind me with this just glued to the back. That's effectively it. So these are either available as a separate standalone unit or preformed and glued onto the back of a solar panel. The biggest downside to these is round trip efficiency. So if you think, DC is generated and that converts this to AC, the current we use. If you're having battery storage on your home, your now battery storage inverter, because you're going to need a separate one, converts that AC back to DC and then from DC back to AC you lose about 10%, 15% in some scenarios through round trip efficiency. But if I've got a power wall three, well, it's got an inverter built into it. If I've got side energy, it's got an inverter built into it. I'm essentially specking two inverters. 
two rounds of cost and massive losses. If you're going for battery storage and that has a built-in inverter, then my strong suggestion would be avoid. The next piece applies to optimizers and micro inverters as well, scaffolding. These warranties on these items are really long. So 25 years in, in this case, seems like a really long warranty, but the warranty only covers you for the part. So if that fails, the manufacturer is gonna go, there's your new one. Your installer warranty is now finished because we're four years later. Who's paying for the scaffolding? You. Who's paying for the cost of installation and maintenance? You. All of a sudden, these fancy gadgets that you no longer really check anymore because after the first week, you're not bothered what each individual panel generates. These are starting to become a bit of a pain in the neck. So what we know is if I put a Powerwall 3 with micro inverters, I lose 10% of my generation and I increase my risk massively on my roof of failure. I don't want to slate these because they definitely have a place in the market space. There are scenarios where we would actively specify one of these. If I'm a commercial building, I've got a vast array, I need rapid level panel shutdown, then I would be strongly considering a microinverter. They definitely have their place, but do be careful. If you've just got a south facing roof, a standard east west facing roof, there's no major amounts of shading, it's not overly complex. You're adding a part there and you're adding a lot of liability and additional cost as well. My suggestion would be in that scenario, avoid. Optimizers are slowly but surely becoming a little bit of a defunct part. We now have more bypass diodes with half cell technology within solar panels. We have more power point trackers. Power point trackers are able to start up at lower voltages. So you only need a couple of panels on them. So the majority of the time now, whilst these were once a rave product that we used to install all the time because of certain scenarios, I found myself specifying them less and less. The reality is this is a part up on your roof that can go wrong in the same way the microinverter can. You could end up with scaffolding. You could end up with someone on your roof. Really, keep it simple. Cut your costs down, spend less, rely more upon your inverter that's on ground level. And actually, panels have a 30 year warranty. You should just be able to fit them and forget them. And a solar panel will probably outlast me in terms of its lifetime if it's installed properly. Once again, if you have any comments, if you need any help and guidance, I'd be more than happy to help you in return for that like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching today.